Science has lost a great mind with the passing of Stephen Hawking, who many of you may have known was a legendary theoretical physicist. Dr. Hawking fought and tamed the cosmos bravely for 76 years, and taught us all something important about what it truly means to celebrate about being a human. In the later years of his life, he put forward the ideas of exploration. Dr. Stephen Hawking said that an extinction event will happen, and that we need to be prepared for it. He said we could become a space faring species, who will look for renewable resources. Dr. Stephen Hawking most notably referred to us as planetary colonizers, and makes the overall suggestion that not only will Earth be our home, but many other celestial bodies in the solar system may find themselves colonized as well. It seems that although he isn't present, Stephen Hawking still contributes to the studies of the cosmos. Just five months after his passing, Hawking's final theory on how the universe originated was published, implying that the model of the eternal inflation was wrong. Stephen Hawking's multiverse theory proposed there are many universes and each one has a similarity to our universe. This work, which he managed to complete a few weeks before his passing in March 2018, paints a clearer picture of the last 13.8 billion years compared to many other previously proposed theories. According to an article published in the Journal of High Energy Physics, Hawking's works on multiverse theory results from collaborations with Thomas Hertog, who was a physicist at the Catholic University of Levin. Hertog said that they worked on a particular theory for a long time and Hawking was very proud of it. He admits that towards the end, it was very difficult to communicate with Hawking, but he never showed any signs of wanting to give up. The two never talked about the possibility of this being Hawking's last paper. Hertog felt so but never mentioned it to him. Physics Today has put forward many theories about the origin of the universe, but among the most popular was that which suggested the Big Bang was some kind of recurring burst of cosmic inflation, which resulted in the scattering of countless pocket universes everywhere in space. The previous autumn, Hawking said that the usual external inflation theory predicts our universe is similar to an infinite fractal with similar but different pocket universes separated by inflating oceans. Hawking and Hertog, however, challenged that view with their latest work, proposing that instead of being four pocket universes where different laws apply, the alternate universes may actually be very similar to each other. Despite the consequences of this proposal not being very obvious, the theory may offer an explanation to scientists who wonder how it exists in a universe that supports life despite the hostile variations. Hertog said the old theory suggested the existence of many different universe times, with some being empty, some filled with matter, others being short-lived while others just expanded too fast. Their mystery was how our universe is so unique from the rest to support life. Hertog believes that their paper brings science a step ahead in explaining the mysterious fine-tuning, and added that it makes the universe a set of similar universes making it more manageable. According to Hertog, this theory is hoped for arriving at a predictive cosmology framework. The multiverse theory has applied the previous works of Hawking and James Hartle, a US physicist which were published back in the 1980s, updating with updated mathematic techniques applied in the string theory where reality is described through the interaction of cosmic rings. Malcolm Perry, who was Hawking's colleague at Cambridge University, said that Hawking was very proud of his latest works. He believes that the multiverse will not be the last paper bearing Hawking's name, because he has written some papers on black holes of Hawking, which are still being prepared for publication. According to Hertog, their works are a fourth step in the theory of cosmic origins which physicists could test. If the universe's evolution according to the multiverse theory is true, it may offer a clue on the gravitational waves of the commonly referred cosmic microwave background, resulting from the radiations released during the creation of the universe. He believes that those signals present clues on whether the multiverse theory is right or wrong. Further studies on the theory will enable the testing of the models of the Big Bang. Another thing Stephen Hawking is known for is singularities. 
Stephen Hawking's final PhD thesis, Properties of Expanding Universes, was recently published online and drew so much attention that it reportedly crashed its host website. It covered several topics including the gravitational radiation that was recently discovered. However, physicists consider his final chapter singularities as it deals with how the universe originated. Albert Einstein revolutionized gravitational studies through his theory of relativity, stating we could take a rarity as a space-time curvature resulting from the presence of energy and mass. One way of thinking about the universe is space-time that combines three-dimensional and one-dimensional space and time respectively. This is almost unimaginable for most people, since despite being able to move freely in 3D space, we cannot freely travel through time. General Relativity tried to explain the relationship between space and time. After the publishing of Einstein's equations, other scientists applied them in their studies of space-time in different situations. Today it's been found with evidence that these objects exist as black holes. The instances where the solutions to the equations become infinite are known as singularities. The final chapter in Hawking's thesis explored singularities, not only focusing on black holes but for the universe as a whole. The model of the steady state tried to do away with cosmological singularities, which many believed was not reasonable as there were shortcomings of the general relativity predictions and the common laws of physics. The steady state proposes the universe as external with no beginning. Its possible expansion could be explained by including into Einstein's equations, a creation field which would imply that the creation of matter occurs continuously in space as the galaxies move apart. In the final chapter of his PhD thesis, Hawking argues that the sea field idea came with its shortcomings, and the correct model could be the Robertson-Walker solution that described an initial singularity. After building on the works of Roger Penrose who was a British physicist, Hawking was able to prove that singularities were featured expected in nature, by effectively demonstrating that the general relativity allowed the birth of a universe that started as a singularity. Almost 50 years later, the observational evidence of the scenario for the creation of the Big Bang has overwhelmed scientists resulting in the abandoning of the steady state model. Stephen Hawking is also known for his contribution to the theory of cosmic inflation. After his passing on the 14th of March, Stephen Hawking left a few papers that he was still working on. Two months later the Journal of High Energy Physics published his final works in cosmology which states that the universe is a lot simpler than suggested by the multiverse theories. The paper is based on the concept of external inflation, which was first introduced in 1979. In this paper, Hawking together with Hertog at the Catholic University, tried to expound on the bizarre concept of external inflation which states that the universe is among many others in the multiverse. Taking some concepts from the string theory, the two scientists argue there is only one universe, and no external inflation claiming that the universe was never created in a singular moment. Back in 1997, one Mosadina, a theorist considered a space volume with a rarity, and demonstrated that the theory was similar to simpler quantum theory on the space boundary without reality. The theory of external inflation comes about since the early universe, Field quantum fluctuations that drive inflation are as big as the average value of the field. However, Hawking and Hertog argue that one cannot just continue with Albert Einstein's general relativity theory in those conditions, but use a method like Marcedinus to view the whole situation in a space less than one dimension, where they claim there would be more traceability, and the physics theories do not result in external inflation, but instead the merging of single universes. This is where it all gets tricky. Theoretical physicists refer to the concept of equating two theories in a space with one less dimension as holography. Hertog argues that the holography principle allows theorists to instead disregard the time dimension. In their theory, Hawking and Hertog argue that through holography, the description of the early universe should be done by a theory that only has three dimensions, without the time dimension. After the discovery that the universe started somewhere, its creation has remained a mystery to researchers. 
Einstein's theory of relativity has tried to well enough explain occurrences after the Big Bang moment, but unfortunately has not explained the creation of the universe. This forms singularity in space-time which trips up the theory. Theorists have thus for a long time been researching a way to avoid the theory of singularity, and one way to achieve that could be losing the time dimension. Hertog says this is a problem that's fascinated Hawking in his entire research works. Several decades in the past, Hawking suggested an alternative solution, after his speculation that at first time was dimensional. This idea, however, does not match with his new works. Researchers have said this isn't the end of eternal inflation and the theory of singularity. Other researchers will scrutinize their work and try to find loopholes. Whether or not researchers find their theories to be sound, Hertog acknowledges there is still a major question that needs to be addressed. So what do you make of these last theories Stephen Hawking was working on? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.